Welcome to Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, you can find us at parkbenchtutors.com or look us up on Facebook. We're going to continue our work on the AAT Access course, and today we're going to look at books of prime entry. We've talked about all the documents that are generated, and we now need to think about what happens to these. Well, this starts with the books of prime entry. We should say straight away that books of prime entry are used in manual systems of accounting. Most computer software does not require entries of this sort, which has a great advantage because it makes for far fewer errors. However, we will go through how the manual system of accounting worked. A book of prime entry is essentially simply the very first place where any information from a transaction is recorded. So we have all these documents and we need to record some information from them and we start then by putting them in a book of prime entry. So the books are going to relate to sales, they're going to relate to purchases and they're going to relate to any movement of cash in and out of the business. Right, so we're going to have books for sales, books for purchases and a cash book. So the books of prime entry for sales must include a sales day book which records the credit sales and it will enter detail from the invoice which is sent out to the customer. Right, So a sales is the invoice sent to the customer. There will also be a sales returns day book and the purpose of this is to record any returns from credit sales and that means returns from customers who have credit and it records the credit notes that are sent to customers. So let's have our example. Our case study is Grimface and Snarler who own Happy Music and they sell musical instruments. So here's an invoice which is being sent to Abel Ringer. So we can see that it includes the details that we've talked about in the previous podcast including who it's from, who it's to, a reference, the tax rate, the details of the items and a total on the invoice, in this case £582. So details from the invoice should be recorded to a sales book, that's a sales day book, and typically we would expect who it's to, what the invoice number was, what the date was and what the amount was. Those are the essential details. What about a credit note? Well, a credit note will be recorded in the sales returns day book and again who it's to, a reference number, a date and the amount on the credit note. Okay, purchases are going to be recorded in the purchases day book and we're going to record invoices for goods that have been received. So the invoice detail that we need in that purchases day book will be who it's from, what the invoice reference is, the date and the amount that we owe, in this case £3,012. Okay, similarly with credit notes, credit notes received from returns are going to be recorded in the purchaser's returns day book and who it's to, what the reference is going to be, the date and what the amount is. Now what about checks? Well, it depends whether they're from someone or to someone. If we've got payments received from customers, then we record them in a cash receipts book because we received the money. What about those that we've made out, checks that we've made out? Payments made to suppliers, they're recorded in a cash payments book because we've paid somebody. So let's just summarize that. A sales day book is used for invoices sent to customers. A sales returns day book for credit notes sent to customers. A purchases day book. Invoices received from a supplier. A purchases returns day book is used for credit notes received from a supplier. A cash receipts day book. Checks received from customers. A cash payments day book. Checks sent to suppliers. That's our summary then of the use of day books. So, okay, let's see if you can remember some of this. We send checks out. Checks have been sent out by times pots. So which day book's going to be used? Okay, some more. Checks have been received by a business. Checks received by Sharon's Boon. Which day book should be used for the entry? 
Okay, here's a credit note sent out from the business which Daybook is used. And a credit note received by a business which Daybook should be used. an invoice received which daybook should be used an invoice sent which daybook should be used that's the end of our session brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft thank you for watching and for listening we wish you success in your studies for more information look us up on Facebook or you can find us at parkbenchtutors.com